welcome back to the deep dive, ready to see what we've uncovered this week. Always up for a good deep dive, especially when it's focused on San Antonio. This week, we're turning our attention to the October 11th edition of Black Life Texas. Always a great source for staying connected to what's happening in our community. Oh, absolutely. It's like a little window into the soul of San Antonio, mm -hmm. the culture, mm -hmm. the concerns, the celebrations, all in one place. And let me tell you, this week's edition is jam-packed. We've got a little something for everyone. Patty Austin coming to town, some really thought-provoking editorials, and a deep dive into something that's becoming increasingly important these days. Cybersecurity. Cybersecurity, huh? And here I thought I was just going to hear about the latest art exhibit. This should be interesting. Well, get ready to be intrigued, because the story that really jumped out at me was about an Uber driver here in San Antonio who was tragically killed due to a scam. Wait, what? Killed because of a scam? That's awful, but how? It was a grandparent scam, to be exact. The details are chilling. It really highlights how vulnerable we all are in this digital age. You know, I have to admit, when I first heard about these grandparent scams, I thought, shh, like I would ever fall for that. Mm -hmm. But then you hear stories like this, and it really makes you think twice. Exactly. I had the same reaction. And that's what makes this article so important. It doesn't just tell you about the scam. It breaks down how these things happen and, more importantly, how to protect yourself. Because it's easy to feel invincible. Like, those scams could never happen to us. But the reality is, these scammers are getting more sophisticated every day. That's exactly it. They know how to push our buttons, how to play on our emotions. And in a moment of panic, it's easy to let your guard down. You're telling me. Imagine getting a call from someone you think is your grandchild, frantic and scared, saying they need your help immediately. Your first instinct is to do whatever it takes to get them out of trouble. Not to stop and question if it's actually them on the other end of the line. Exactly. And that's what these scammers are banking on, our compassion, our desire to help. It's what makes us human, but it's also what makes us vulnerable. So before we even get into the nitty gritty of digital security measures, what are some of those red flags we should be looking out for? What should set off alarm bells in our heads? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Because you're right. Knowledge is power and forewarned is forearmed. So give us the lowdown. What exactly should we be looking out for? Well, I think the biggest red flag is a sense of urgency. You know, if someone's pressuring you to act quickly without thinking, without asking questions, that's a huge warning sign. Scammers use that tactic to get you to act impulsively instead of using your better judgment. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's like they're trying to get you to bypass that inner voice that's saying, wait a minute, something's not right. Exactly. And another big one is never, ever, ever give out your personal information over the phone, especially not things like bank details or your social security number. Yeah, that seems obvious, but... You would be surprised how easy it is to let your guard down when you're in a stressful or emotional situation. A legitimate organization will never pressure you to give up that information over the phone. Right. Write that down, folks. Black Life Texas does a great job in this article of breaking down all these tips, things like software updates. Ugh, software updates, my nemesis. Am I the only one who's guilty of ignoring those little reminders? <laughs> you and me both, right? <laughs> but seriously, they're more important than you might think, especially in terms of cybersecurity. Think of software updates as a vaccine for your digital devices. Those updates usually contain the latest security patches, and those patches are designed to protect you from all those digital viruses and scammers. So hitting that update button is like washing your hands, a simple habit that can actually save you a lot of trouble down the line. Exactly. Now, have you ever struggled to come up with a secure password, you know, one that you can actually remember? Is that a rhetorical question? Because, oh, yes, I have a notebook full of password attempts that look like hieroglyphics. Well, you're not alone. It's a common struggle. But this article actually offers a really great solution. Passphrases. Passphrases? <laughs> What's that, like a secret handshake for the digital age? It's a longer phrase that's easy for you to remember, but doesn't make sense to anyone else. It's like, think of a sentence or a string of words that's unique to you. They give a fun example in the article. Purple elephant sliding over clouds. See? Memorable and way harder to crack than your typical password one, two, three. Purple elephant sliding over clouds. All right, I think I can remember that. I'm adding it to my mental vault right now. See? Easy peasy. And then another simple thing that people often overlook is the HTTPS in those website addresses. Oh, yeah, I've seen that, but I've never actually understood what it meant. It's all about encryption. That little S at the end of HTTPS tells you that the website is secure. 
That means your information is being scrambled up, encrypted when it's being transmitted, making it much harder for those pesky hackers to intercept. So always look for that HTTPS, especially when you're shopping online or putting any personal data into a site. So it's like the digital equivalent of a bodyguard for your information. Precisely. And speaking of being vigilant, never underestimate the power of a good old fashioned email check. You mean like actually looking at who sent the email before you click on anything? You got it. Because scammers can create very convincing looking emails these days. But if you look closely at the sender's address, there's usually a telltale sign, a misspelling, an extra letter, a weird domain name. Those little things can be a dead giveaway. So basically channel your inner Sherlock Holmes before you click on anything. Exactly. Digital detective work. I like it. And speaking of navigating a complex landscape, what did you think about editor Fred Williams' take on the whole political scene? He didn't hold back in this edition. Oh, man. Fred never does. He had some pretty strong opinions about Bernie Sanders' recent trip to Texas. Right. It seemed like he was really concerned about how that visit might impact some of these local elections, especially with the race for Ted Cruz's Senate seat heating up. Especially since Cruz is in a pretty tight race this year. Exactly. And then there's that whole debate about calling all red strategy, you know, appealing to more conservative voters. Right. Williams seemed a little skeptical about that, didn't he? Like he thought all red might alienate his base by trying to win over the other side. It's a tough line to walk, for sure. Alienate your base or risk not appealing to a wider audience. Tricky. And then from high stakes political drama to something completely different. Black Life Texas took us on a fascinating journey through Texas history, exploring the often overlooked story of the exploitation of indigenous people. Yeah, that was a powerful read. Williams didn't shy away from the hard truths there. It really highlighted a side of our state's history that often gets glossed over. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That quote from Ramon Vasquez, the Native American activist, really struck me. He said, we can't put up statues celebrating people like Christopher Columbus without acknowledging the indigenous communities who were here long before those explorers ever arrived. It's a powerful reminder to look at history from multiple perspectives. Right. Great. To acknowledge not just the victors, but also those who were often marginalized and whose voices weren't heard. Absolutely. And Black Life Texas does a great job of going beyond just stating the facts. They provide context, delving into the complexities of those relationships between the indigenous tribes, the Spanish settlers, key figures like Stephen F. Austin, even Andrew Jackson gets thrown into the mix. It's eye-opening when you start to understand the layers of history there. Yeah. Like the article talked about how land-grant systems were essentially manipulated to benefit white settlers. Right, and then how some tribes were pitted against others. Divide and conquer tactics. It makes you realize that the events of the past, even the distant past, still have repercussions today. Which actually brings us back to something we discussed earlier, that FBI warning about disinformation, especially as we head into this election season. Yeah, that definitely felt timely after reading all of this. With all this talk about cybersecurity and political maneuvering, I almost forgot. Black Life Texas reminded us that the legendary Patty Austin is gracing San Antonio with her presence this week. At the Carver, no less. Oh, wow. Now that's a name that deserves some serious applause. A true icon. I mean, we're talking Grammy-winning, six-decade career, collaborations with music legends from Quincy Jones to Diana Ross. Patty Austin is practically royalty in the music world. You're telling me, and get this, she made her debut at the Apollo Theater at four years old. Four. I could barely tie my shoes at that age, let alone command a stage. Talk about a natural born performer. By five, she had a record deal. The woman is a force of nature. It really goes to show you the power of talent and determination and the range of her voice from R&B to jazz to soul. She transcends genres. She's not just a singer, she's a storyteller. If you need me, I'll be first in line for that concert, that's for sure. I'm right there with you. And if anyone out there is looking for ways to tap into San Antonio's vibrant cultural scene, because it's definitely out there, Black Life Texas is a great resource. They have a whole section dedicated to local events. In fact, they encourage everyone to check out blacksinsanantonio.com for the full rundown. It's a fantastic hub for all things arts and culture in our city. A much needed dose of positivity and creative energy, especially given some of the heavier topics we discussed today. You took the words right out of my mouth.
But speaking of those heavier topics, I think it's worth circling back to that FBI warning about election disinformation. It really makes you stop and think, especially with everything else we've discussed today, cybersecurity, the complexities of local elections. It's all connected. You're absolutely right. Think about it. We talked about those cyber scams that prey on people's emotions, how easily our desire to help can be manipulated. Yeah. Then those political campaigns and how those can sometimes exploit our fears and anxieties. And then we delved into those often overlooked aspects of history, how narratives can be shaped and manipulated over time. It's a lot to unpack, but it highlights how crucial it is to be aware, to be critical thinkers, especially in this digital age where information or misinformation spreads like wildfire. It's almost like we need a whole new set of skills to navigate the 21st century, right? Like digital literacy, media literacy, historical awareness. It's not enough to just vote. We need to be informed voters, responsible citizens. We can't just accept everything we see and hear at face value. We have to question things, do our own research, look for those different perspectives. Exactly. And that's why I think these deep dives are so important. It's about more than just summarizing an article or two. It's about connecting the dots, helping people see the bigger picture, those patterns and connections that might not be obvious at first glance. It's about empowering people with the knowledge and the tools they need to make informed decisions both in their personal lives and in the voting booth. Because at the end of the day, knowledge is power, right? Couldn't agree more. And I hope everyone listening feels a little more empowered, a little more informed, a little more ready to navigate this complex and constantly evolving world we live in. Black Life Texas certainly gave us a lot to ponder this week, from practical cybersecurity tips to a deeper understanding of our local community and the challenges we face together, both past and present. But until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and keep on diving deep, everybody.